What is up guys? It's your boy Rick Crafting Cacus and today we are going to be discussing the brand new weapon crafting system introduced into Destiny 2 with the Witch Queen expansion. Now this crafting system requires quite a lot of resources and getting those resources for a lot of players isn't the easiest thing out there. Not only that but when you do eventually shape craft a certain weapon, there's a pretty big time commitment to leveling that weapon up and you have to spend even more of your limited crafting resources changing the perks to an eventual god roll. So for a lot of new players, the prospect of picking and crafting a certain weapon, committing to that weapon, leveling it up, and for goodness sakes eventually getting the enhanced perks on that weapon is a daunting one. So in this video, we are going to be going over the best weapon you want to craft and level up and commit to right off the bat. These are weapons that you will not regret doing so in the long run and again this is a great resource for brand new or returning players that don't play eight hours a day to get you know ascended alloy. So let's get started. Now first things first if you are at all confused about how the crafting system works I've already done a video explaining that it is linked up above please check that out or else the rest of this video won't make sense. Another thing is that all the weapons we're featuring today are accessible, right? There's some great seasonal weapons, but you need five different deep sites of those weapons and that could take weeks, especially the throne world weapons. Some of them very accessible, they'll be in this video. Others, you have to farm Wellspring for eight hours to hopefully get three different deep sight drops so we are avoiding the really hard to get grindy weapons. We're just talking about the ones that are available pretty easily to the majority of players. And the first one we're going to showcase right off the bat guys, this is something I would highly recommend crafting, is the Palmyra B rocket launcher. So this stasis rocket drops randomly from world drops. You probably have just gotten two deep sight versions of these because so much different things, prime engrams, random legendary engrams, rewards, all that stuff have a chance to drop this world drop. And it is absolutely excellent. So this is a Hakka precision frame rocket launcher. So it has built in tracking. So the ease of use is definitely pretty high. And when we look at the perks it can get, it is simply unbelievable. So in that first slot you can get things like Ambitious Assassin where if you get a multi-kill with your rocket launcher, which is pretty hard not to do, you're then going to have two rounds in your rocket, pretty good, but it also has the S plus tier perk auto loading holster. This is essential for a lot of rocket launcher DPS strategies, allowing you to shoot your rocket, switch back to your sniper rifle, whatever, do a ton of damage, switch back to your rocket, it's already reloaded. And often, even if you're not doing DPS, you're just playing the game normally, you want to shoot your rocket, you know, kill that powerful enemy, uh, kill that group of enemies, and then switch back to your other stuff anyways, so auto-loading is incredible. Then in that second perk tier, oh my goodness, it somehow gets even better. You can get lasting impression, which is going to make the rocket explode after a little bit, but massively increase the damage. Lasting impression is going to get you the highest damage possible for your rocket launcher, and again is used in many damage output strategies, but it can also get stuff like frenzy and even explosive light. Me personally, I might prefer Explosive Light. It provides a 25% damage bonus, almost as much as lasting, and is way easier to use in normal activities. If you're trying to kill adds, lasting will often explode when the adds are already dead or moved away or whatever. So either one, really, really good, like literal god tier. And if all of that wasn't enough, guys, the intrinsic Hakka perk is actually going to make this weapon do more damage against vehicles, turrets, barricades, and stasis crystals. And vehicles applies to, I believe, stuff like Cabal tanks, which you are going to face quite a few times, and Cyclopses, and even, I think, Shriekers. So that extra 20% damage is going to come up quite a bit just going through random PvE activities. 
One word of caution, however, the velocity is pretty low, so anything to increase that is pretty good. And for enhanced lasting impression, it's only gonna increase the blast radius, which really doesn't matter. So don't spend your precious alloy on that particularly. However, moving on from there, the next weapon I would recommend crafting is another World Drop Haka weapon, the Ragnold D, or however this is pronounced. Now, this kinetic shotgun, you can literally craft your own god-tier PvP shotgun. Importantly, for shotguns, stuff like the barrel is so important. Like, in this one, you can literally craft full choke just at level 5 to tighten the pellet spread. That's so important. If you want more handling, you have things like barrel shroud and corkscrew that you can again just pick. I would stay far, far away from smoothbore, by the way, because that's going to increase the spread. Um, but you also can like purposely put on accurized rounds. And again, when you're going for a god roll shotgun normally, getting the right barrel and, and accurized or assault mag and stuff it was the hardest part of the god roll. Now you can just craft it. In terms of the perks, you're really going for in that first slot, steady hands is going to improve handling after a kill. But honestly, perpetual motion, just running around, which obviously you're going to be doing with a shotgun, is going to increase handling, make this more snappy super super good and then in that second slot i think what you're really going for is elemental capacitor because this is going to give you straight up plus 50 handling letting you swap to this weapon super fast aim downside super fast as long as you're on an arc subclass and guys people spent just days and days and weeks farming the prophecy dungeon over and over again because its shotgun could get elemental capacitor and for this one you can just craft it absolutely insane god tier pvp shotgun right here moving on from there however the next weapon i think is a great craft is going to be the forensic nightmare that comes from the throne world so this one you do get out of a quest and then you have to get three of them however if you are farming the deep sight tier three chests which i did do a video on a great route talking about how to level up your throne world rank as quickly as possible you're honestly going to get this thing in no time and this is a really solid and just safe weapon because it has some great rolls for either pvp or pve so it's a precision frame 600 rounds per minute smg now for the first main perk, it can get things like Grave Robber, we're going to talk about why in a sec, uh, but also Perpetual Motion on this type of SMG in PvP is going to be excellent. And then in that second main column, it can get, firstly, Swashbuckler, and really early at level 4, so you can craft a version with Grave Robber to get your ammo back after a melee kill, and then Swashbuckler, which gives you a 35% damage bonus after you get a melee kill, and that's an absolute wombo combo, gonna be very fun and pretty darn good for most of the things you're doing as a brand new player, leveling up the throne world, strikes, gambit, whatever, it's gonna be pretty darn solid, but later on you're also going to get kill clip and like perpetual motion kill clip on a 600 rpm in pvp is going to be solid it's not going to be a literal god tier but it is going to be quite usable harmony is an option too and then for pve you can get headstone and this is the first ever smg we are seeing with headstone headstone is an s tier perk if you're running a stasis build in pve and even if you're not like freezing an enemy with headstone blowing up the crystal and killing everything nearby can be very effective so this is again a really solid little weapon it's not quite god tier like the other two weapons but it will be good in either pvp or pve depending on how you craft it and then guys moving on from there there's only one weapon from the season i'm going to mention and again that's just because they're so hard to get but this one's too good not to mention it's the explosive personality so this is a solar wave frame grenade launcher we haven't seen one of these since season of the dawn like two years ago and the perks for this are absolutely insane in that first column you can get things like field prep for more ammo and faster reloading but what you're really going for is auto loading holster or even feeding frenzy holy crap that's going to be amazing and then in the second column you've got stuff like even unrelenting is going to be really easy to trigger with this weapon and start your healing 
Frenzy, especially combined with auto-loading, means that you can trigger Frenzy while using your other weapons. Whip this weapon out, it has a damage bonus. One for All is fantastic, providing a huge damage bonus in PvE. Even Golden Tricorn wouldn't be bad. This is going to be fantastic in uh, solar well builds, especially when solar 3.0 comes out. The Wayframe grenade launchers are just fantastic. I've been using the Deafening Whisper so much in void builds. This is absolutely something I would feel safe crafting. But moving on from there, guys, there's one last weapon I want to talk about, and this is cheating a little bit because you don't actually have to craft it. The game kind of does it for you. It's the Enigma Glaive. So, during the campaign, you are not only made to craft it, but there's another quest where you go in and put on an enhanced perk for it. However, the glaive is actually pretty darn good if you have a specific build around it, especially if you're playing Hunter and you have uh, the aspect where you can go invisible after you kill an enemy affected by suppression, well then put on Suppressing Glaive, the artifact mod, and every enemy you kill will be suppressed and you're going invisible after every single kill. It's pretty insane. So, it is a great weapon to level up. In terms of the perks you're looking for in that first column, you have stuff like Grave Robber. That's glitched right now, but when it is fixed, it'll be insane. Subsistence is pretty good. And even something like Impulse Amplifier to increase that velocity can be very darn good and reload speed. Then in that second perk, again, there's a lot of good things. Unrelenting, uh, Kill Clip, Rampage, Frenzy. However, a lot of people have told me that Unstoppable Force they find really darn good. Blocking damage with your shield increases the projectile damage, but you can kind of block and shoot at the same time. So you simply stand there and block and shoot and every single shot gets, I think, like a 35% damage increase, which is really substantial. So this is definitely, again, something that you should feel safe leveling up. And so guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.